too. So it was originally called the Alumni Memorial Building. Cornerstone is actually over there in the northeast corner by the bushes over there. You can see it later, but it's over there. 1956, when it was renovated and put here. Uh, when the alumni built their new building on Centennial about you know three or four years ago, this was renamed to Winslow Hall after Arthur Winslow, who was a member of the Watauga Club and famous Freemason in North Carolina. Now, this building originally was the infirmary. When State College was first built, the uh, college basically expanded out of that building very quickly. We needed first, we needed new dorms, membership was growing, we needed infirmaries. Yeah, like, actually, like, give the UFO, like, yeah. 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 I, like, go back to the studio and I cut all the pieces up into yeah. tiny pieces yeah. and I the whole thing. <laughs> so, yeah. 13 men, all under the age of 30. Uh, many of these men, over half of them, were in that uh, the fraternity, the Freemasons, and a lot of other folks you might already know. Uh, over here, Josephus Daniels. Josephus Daniels was an interesting character because he was the founder of the News and Observer. Not the founder, an editor. Uh, some people think he found it because he took it from a little town newspaper, made it a big state newspaper. Uh, also was Secretary of the Navy under President Woodrow Wilson. Now, Josephus Daniels had a house up... Yeah, I can't remember. Cup of Joe. Cup of Joe. Cup of Joe. Yeah, Cup of Joe. Yeah, because of Josephus Daniels. He banned alcohol. When Holiday Hall started growing up, we needed a new library. That one little room in the basement sucked. We needed a bigger one. So remember the same guy who renovated it? Hobart Upjohn? He did this building. He went up to UVA and said, Oh, my goodness, Thomas Jefferson, I like your shit. Let's build a building that looks just like it. Monticello, here it is. So design Monticello looks just like Holiday Hall. Now, uh, oh, look, the door's open. Let's go inside. <laughs> what? How are you? Have fun. And I'm talking about this building and that building and blah blah blah. It sucks for acoustics in this room. And they make sure they stuff up and you can't hear anything. So we're looking for a new jury room because a lot of these students here want this floor removed and they don't put that together. Obviously, it would make a lot of sense. Look how nice that is. <coughs> a lot of that is original and has been restored in a 1988 restoration effort. But all the white walls you see are just pin up board. It's really squishy, so you can pin stuff to it really easy. Uh, it's made a dome that's made out of an inner and an outer dome, just like uh, Florence, Italy, that church there, the Duomo. It uh, has an inner shell and an outer casing. It was started, it was finished two years later in 26. So, just like Holiday Hall's cornerstone, inside this one, a lot of the same. Documents pertaining to the founding of this building, pictures of D.H. Hill, things he did, uh, an aerial shot of campus from a, they called it an aeroplane back then. All right, uh, we're gonna continue walking. All right, so on campus, we did have a student union, and it started as early as the early 1900s. And it was based in Holiday Hall in the chapel because the student union was basically the basement of the old YMCA. Inside the basement included a bowling alley, Olympic sized swimming pool, and a massive set of lockers to serve the whole student body. Now, the student union, or the YMCA, uh, was renamed later to King Hall because Edward Skull King was the first secretary. Boys and all girls, Gold Hall and Welch Hall. Behind me, um, Syme Hall, George F. Syme. Uh, was one of the pioneers of the Nicaraguan Canal. You know, that didn't happen. What did happen? The Panama Canal. So he's a, a big engineer involved in all that, which is why he got a dormitory named for him. And because NC State University was one of the only colleges at the time bifurcated by an active railroad track, we had to find a way to connect everything together. And who went up uh, for NC State? Augustus Liaison. This is his building because when Watauga burned down, we, we didn't want to put the dining hall in a building again, let the thing burn down. So we gave it its own separate building. Here it is. Uh, finished in 1912, the same year the Titanic sank, we got a dining hall. And it was first just the front part with the kitchen on the back. They added a second part after that. Now the reason they added a second part is a bit of a cloud of history, but because it's history, uh, I'm going to go ahead and tell you. The back part was originally during the whole Jim Crow South section. The front was where white folks ate, the back was where black folks ate. And a lot of NC State was divided that way until in the 1960s, I'm happy to say, our student government passed the first resolution out of any UNC system school to integrate the campus. And we did it first here on NC State's campus. And the rest of us, the rest of them just followed us. This is great.
gray space was where the serving line was. So the, it was a T shape, so you walk down the line, out the line, and then you got the table. Every county in North Carolina. There were 100 shrubs, slash trees, slash plants, therefore, 100 counties. So there's no name comes from. So it's a court of. Stacy Barrett told me I'm sorry? Stacy Barrett told me it's, a myth. it's true, it's true. Hurricane uh, Hazel took out a lot of trees originally and then aimed thusly because of a, the whole 100 counties thing. But it is the court of North Carolina. Now, this is the oldest space on campus, the most protected space as far as the students are concerned, because it's the last green space we have that's not been bricked to hell. So, surrounding a lot of the older buildings on campus. In front of you, 1911. Uh, what year was it built? 1909. All of you wrong. 1909. It was finished uh, in 1910 and dedicated by the class of 1911. Who was name? Because the class of 1911 ended hazing. Well, they're staggered, but now you'll never forget it. <laughs> so, when liaison, when liaison, when right over the uh, top of the doorway, there's the block S. This whole back piece right here where the door is, it sticks out from the building was slapped onto the back of the building by Hobart Upjohn in 1928 when he renovated it. And when he did that, he, uh, he had just finished our very first gymnasium on campus. It was called Frank Thompson Gym, and it is now the theater. It used to have a hanging track in it, but when they restored the building uh, just a year and a half ago, I think, they opened up a lot of the older sections, and over the middle doorway, over a little fountain, you see the very first block S on this campus. Uh, and tell your friends, next time this happens, bring 100,000 more people. Hey, it was a fun time. Got any questions? I'm here.